2014, but I signed up in um, of January of 2014. And for those of you that were coached then, 21 Day Fix came out in February of 2014. And it was like the craziest thing in the world. Like you couldn't find it anywhere. It was on eBay for like seven times the price. So everyone was hitting success club. So I hit success club February of 2014, like crazy numbers along with the rest of the world. And then March of 2014, and then no success club points at all the rest of the year. And I made like a lot of excuses. I was like, I'm really busy um etc cetera, etc cetera. and then i went to this team retreat because it was in florida i live in florida um and then i realized there's everyone else is just as busy as me if i have a very lim limited time i might as well use all that limited time to do this um and i've hit success club 10 every month six. so i always like to say that because i think a lot of people get caught up with people who just like dive in and their success starter i wasn't a success starter success starter and they get a diamond in six months and you're like sitting there being like, how do these people do it? Um, we're all on our own journey. So just don't get caught up in that. But I just like to start with that. So branding yourself on social media, creating a team culture, and then we'll talk about inviting real quick. So to start, um, there's 450,000 Beachbody coaches, millions of health coaches and people with their own programs. And there's a fit girls guide and there's a million different health coaches out there. So how do you separate yourself? You separate yourself by posting raw, real, and authentic posts. Something popped up on my newsfeed today, like two day, two years ago, you posted this, and it was like 21 day fix extreme on my living room floor, like all the program materials out, my face wasn't in it, and it was like such a salesy post. Like those things are so consistent on um, social media. It's people who are showing up every single day and really showing their real life that are the ones that are successful. So every single one of my posts has a purpose. I don't just post the post. Um, I personally don't plan my posts. Um, I know a lot of successful coaches do, so there's no really right or wrong way. You just gotta figure out what works for you. But I don't say like, tomorrow at 12 o'clock, I'm gonna post this acai bowl that I made five days ago. Like I'm just not one of those people. It never really works for me. But if it works for your schedule and works for your life, then definitely do that. Um, but I don't just like post the post. And like, we all make mistakes or not mistakes, but we all like make posts for like, why did I do that? Like last night, for example, um, in overtime of the game, my uh, cable cut out and I was so pissed off that I cut out during overtime that I took a picture on Snapchat. It wasn't even like a real good picture, a picture of Snapchat of like my blurry screen and literally just posted, I can't believe this has happened in overtime, dot, 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 with this picture. And then like 30 minutes later, I was like, what am I doing? Like, this is not a good on brand picture and I deleted it. So it's not like I like don't mess up and make mistakes. Um, but even one of my coaches was like, I saw you deleted that post because it's like so unlike you. Um, if you look at my newsfeed or my Instagram feed, you'll barely ever see a picture without my face in it and you will don't see like stupid pictures like that or share stupid pictures so um i really like really have a purpose with everything um i include a picture of me with 95 percent of my posts if i really like a quote and i want to share it i share it in the caption with a picture of me um there's so many quotes and so many screenshots and so much negativity and so much like blah on news feeds people are going to connect with you um, way more than the same Instagram picture that I've seen posted 300 times. Usually the same like mem, meme, meme, I don't know what they're called, are like posted at the same time on everyone's news feed. So if you really want to post it, at least post a picture of you and make it a little bit different than everyone else's news feed. Um, and then I say post in my, vo my voice. Um, I see a lot of people copy like word for word people's like long essays of posts. Um, and maybe that will get you somewhere in the short term, but in the long term, um, when you private message people, you're not going to sound the same, especially if you're like copying like, it, like information about them. It's one thing to like copy something that's like, I, mean, I don't believe in copying at all, but like if you're copying like personal details about someone that's like not true to your life. Like if I was going to copy one of Andrea's posts about me, a mom to three boys, like that clearly that's like completely different. Um, you're not going to connect with people maybe people, someone will or maybe a mom would connect to that post on my page but then when she learned i didn't have children like it just doesn't make any sense but i see people do that all the time and i just don't understand it um and then i really drip stories into posts 
like I have anxiety, like I have anxiety, but you can drip that into so many different stories and so many different posts, like thousands of posts. That's not, I hear people all the time be like, well, I already talked about my anxiety in a post, so I can't talk about it again. Like that's literally, like I wouldn't post it in a negative way. I always like make sure I can put it on a positive spin, but you could talk about that forever because there's just so many different little pieces to that. So my main three posts besides every morning I wake up and I post, um, I actually do a picture um, of me drinking my pre-workout every morning and it's like my thoughts, my personal development, and then I do a post-workout one. Besides that, my three main like topics, I guess you could say, would be raw posts, whole posts, and daily posts. So the raw posts are like really raw. This isn't just like kind of cutting the service. This is things that I'm literally afraid to tell my best friend that I'm really struggling right now. Um, I used to say like what I would only tell my best friend. This is really what I'm afraid to tell my best friend. Like if something happens and I'm just like, I can't tell a single soul. Well, then I tell my entire Facebook news feed and I get so many people that message me. These are the posts that do amazing well and they're not the post where someone messages me and says I'm gonna build, buy a challenge pack right now but they're the post that people message me like tons of messages and like I can't believe someone else feels like that or like this is my story related to that and then when I message them they feel like they already know me um so it's like publicly forming people um whole post if you're going to google it then post it um anytime I go to google something um, I'm trying to think of an example recently. Like at, like the, the goat thing, like greatest of all time. I was like, what the heck is this? And I was literally posting to Google. And then I was like, well, I should just ask my newsfeed. So and then I posted this morning and all these people started commenting. And I was like, I don't know. I don't I guess I'm too old. I'm 27. I had no idea what that was. Um, but anything that I ever think I'm going to Google, like no matter how small or whatever, I post it because people want to give their opinion. Um, and especially things like that with the greatest all time or like how to build a cabinet i'm making that up but like something you would google like something related to your life people are also going to relate to that um i see a lot of polls of like what fitness program should i do next like that's not personal that's just kind of like maybe you really do want someone's opinion of what program you're going to do next uh, um but i like to ask polls of like real things in my life. So if I'm gonna ask Google, I'm gonna ask my best friend, I post it. Um, dress posts really do well. If you're ever like going to get a wedding dress. Um, and just if you're ever doing like clothing things, this is like such a small thing, but I really highly suggest um, at least posting one option that's like really different than the others. If you're posting like three that are pretty similar, it's gonna be harder to get like way different answers. Um, but if you have at least one that's like way out there, you'll get more people responding and be like, girl, what the heck are you thinking about that dress? Um, and then a little other small thing is I always like to put like A, B, C on them versus just like the four pictures or the three pictures. Cause then people are like, oh, that one, or like the middle one, um, just small little things like that. But those posts do really well as well. Um, and they really brand me and, um, get people to like, feel like they're, I'm publicly forming them um and then daily posts so i make a list of these really weekly and i continue to update them and they're not like sentences i just brain up my current thoughts um but what is normal about me what makes me relatable and like for me like simple as like i love monograms i love neon straws i love 90s rap music like it's not like something crazy but i make sure that i talk about that um and it's consistent thing what am I an expert in? What are things that come easily to me? Um, what can I add quick value to others? I see people all the time trying to add value and like struggle with how to add value to other people and think they need to make like an ebook. Like I don't have time to make an ebook. So if you have time to make an ebook, props to you, but I don't have time. My quick value to people is like this Lululemon headband is amazing. It doesn't slip. You should buy it at twelve dollars. Or like if you love. S Club 7, this, or like you love 90s music, this S Club 7 Spotify station is like your jam. Like that's me adding value to people. If you make great ebook, pro more props to you. I don't have time to do it. Um, what makes me special? Like I love organizing my closet by color. Um, some people would drive themselves insane, but I'll connect with people that also like to organize their closet by color. What have I overcome due to this lifestyle? 
Can you also talk about in general what have you overcome? Um, but I really like to talk about like what have I overcome to this, due to this lifestyle? And you'll see in my post a lot, I talk about um, how personal development and the communities and challenge groups have really helped me overcome anxiety and depression and sexual assault. Those are three big freaking topics. I could drip that into posts for years. So just remember, like, there's just little, and if you struggle with one of those, you wouldn't really understand what I'm saying, but I think we all at some point struggle with one of those. Um, there can be just some tiny little things that you can relate back to. Um, what am I passionate about for me? It's like kind of the same thing. I've overcome anxiety. And I'm so happy. and I'm so passionate about sharing that with other people because of coaching. Um, but whatever you're passionate about, like I wish I had a dog and then when I babysit dogs, I'm so passionate about the freaking dog. So if you are a dog mom, like post about that, like Amy, real one posts about that a lot. People relate to that. Um, and then think to yourself, what attracted you to your first challenge group? And then what attracted you to coaching and then drip that into posts. Um, all of this is really my branding and what I do. I try to keep it as simple as freaking possible um, for my own sake and then to be able to teach it to my coaches. Um, Andrea, do you want me to just go to the next topic and then at the end questions? Yeah, that's good. Okay. All right, awesome. Okay. So creating a team culture. Uh, Andrea, want me to talk about this as well? My biggest like one of my biggest regrets with coaching is that I waited way too long to make my own coach group um and I remember when Amy Morgan who's my coach was like I think you should make your own coach group I was like devastated I was like what you're kicking me out of your group and I thought it was like the worst thing ever um and I just regret that I waited so long to do it I would really recommend doing it when you have a couple of business builders um don't wait until your diamond or don't wait until your coach kicks you out like really um, push yourself at your comfort level and make a group. And then for my coaching team, um, we have a pretty good team culture. And I think it's because, so there's no discount coaches in there. Obviously people like say they're going to work the business and then don't, if they do that, then I leave them in there, but I don't just add discount coaches who like start off that way. But I just like team building activity, something not related to the business. So like team building activity, what's your favorite movie or what's your favorite TV show or I don't even know, like what's your favorite brand of jeans? Like so, something super simple. Um, I really try to do it every day, but I forget. So three to four times a week, those posts get super freaking popular. And it's always the people that are like the hobby discount coaches in the group. Like my business builders comment too. Um, but it's a lot of people who don't comment on anything else that comment on those. And it really um, gets people back into the post and talking to each other and learning more about each other. One time there was a thread about this TV show I'd never heard of. And they're all going back and forth to each other on the thread. Um, it really just creates a great team culture within the group. Every day at 7 a.m. I go live in the group um, just with a quick tip. Um, and that really, and people, they know that I'll be going live at 7 a.m. So they tune in and they come back to each other. Um, so that's another great way. Um, when a coach messages me, I used to tell coaches like message me anything. I'm always available, which by the way is really bad for your work life balance. But now when they message me, unless it's like a personal question, I'm like, Hey, I'll be happy to answer. Can you post in the team page? And they post in the team page and I wait a good like 20 minutes to an hour to respond. Um, and usually by then one of the other coaches or like several coaches have responded and they really get to know each other that way. Um, that really works and of course I like respond if no one's responded um and then I have something called um why are you smiling thread that one of my coaches posts every day it's just a picture that says why are you smiling today um and some days there's like two comments and some days there's like today there's a ton of comments and it's just anything in your life why you're smiling why you're having a good day and just another way for people to talk um to each other and with each other and reflect on their day in a positive manner in the group, um, not related to the business. And then I have three message threads. Um, our leader's thread is anyone with six plus active coaches. Obviously if they get six and they drop down to four, I don't take them out. Um, but we talk a lot of business in there, but we also talk a lot of personal stuff. And it's like those, those coaches are like my family. Like I'm so, so close to the people in the leader's thread. Um, and then there's Caroline's coach huddle posted thread, 
So this is kind of like Pat's coach huddle, but not really. It's literally just for people to say posted when they post on social media. This has been a huge one. Like, so for example, let's say I post on social media, I'll say posted and whoever's available at that time will go like or comment my post. Um, but then the rule is like, let's say Andrea is the next one to say posted. Andrea has to like or comment the last three posts. So people are constantly liking and commenting. I really just made it originally so that people, new coaches could get like their post um, activity driven up or whatever, but it's really turned into people really bonding and talking and getting to know each other because they're like, not forced, but they're like, if they want someone to like and comment their post, they have to look at other people's posts um, that posted right before them and they really get to know each other. And they talk. And one of my coaches told me that this thread was like the best thing that ever happened to her um, because she's in a dead leg. Her coach, one of my coaches stopped coaching and she was on like the, her weak leg. So she felt like she was alone. She was like, I got to know. She's now like on a team cup with someone else on a different leg, like far away or whatever in the organization. But they're so close because they found each other in this thread. They're like the same person. Um, and then I have this like TBS girls only no boys allowed thread. It's like totally personal life um, without the male coaches in my team because um, they were tired of hearing about our stuff. But um, it's a really cool like bonding thing. And it's like a message thread. So I'm not a big fan of groups, but I have all these message threads and they're like labeled so I can find them. Um, but just a lot of like personal talk. We used to have a social hour that we would do. But I found that the message threads, you almost get to know each other like better because it's like things that come up like that moment versus like waiting to talk about something every week. Um, so it's really, really close relationship um, and a lot of personal talk that happens. But I think it's made people very strong in this business. I mean, there's people on my team that are so freaking close to each other um, because of things like this. Um, and then um, Andrea asked me to talk about a little bit of inviting. So I don't know what scares you guys out of inviting. Sometimes I catch myself. I feel like I'm going to bother someone. And then I have to, like, or, like, afraid they're going to say no or afraid they're going to, like, talk about me. Like, I think we all have those fears sometimes. Um, and then I just have to remind myself everything that this opportunity has done for me. And I just got to remember that if I don't invite them, like, I could not be giving them the opportunity to change their life like I have. Um, and trust me, it's hard. But for me, I personally invite the second after I work out because I am so freaking pumped about Beachbody and about life. And I'm so happy. Um, so that really works for me. Like, I'm like, like, when I get home, I'm like tired right now. Like, I would invite because I know I should, but I like won't be as jazzed about it as I would at 6 30 in the morning um so that's like my biggest tip is to really do it when you're like the happiest for me it's post-workout in the morning um and so I've made it so it's like you know that's the only thing I get done before I go to work and that's okay so um that's for my inviting and then I just wanted to say like this is the invite I've been using for February I'm at success club 18 so far Hey, Caroline, I'm not sure if you've seen my post. My self-love February accountability group kicks off on Monday, so I'll change that code today. And I'm honestly so freaking excited for it to start. Are you interested in the cost details to join us? I like to use cost details a lot so people like automatically know there's a cost involved, um, so they know it's not free. A lot of people respond and say, like, if there's a cost, I'm not interested. And then I say, um, they say that I'm like, well, you could do the 30-day free trial or whatever. Um, but I do like to say cost up front, just me personally. I keep it really simple. I ask the five questions in the script. Um, and then as, as I'm sure that this would be the best thing for them, I say, so to keep it as simple as possible, you get the following, blah, blah, blah. Um, I love to be able to do my workouts whenever I want. What questions do you have? So that's all I have, but I'm happy to take any questions you guys have on any of the three topics. Cool. We, we will, um, if anyone has questions, we can, you can type them in the chat and then she can read them. Um, I loved how you said, Caroline, how you invite when you're really excited. I think that's so yeah. important that you invite when, after you do something that makes you excited about 
coaching. Again, I do the exact same thing. I get up, I do my workout and I invite right before or right after because that's like when I'm like the most um, excited about it. So like you said, like tonight I could lay in bed and do invites, but I'm not like, I'm tired. Like I'm probably not going to do them. And that way in the morning, I'm sure you go to work and you're like, oh, well, I already did what I really needed to do to move my business forward first. So that was cool. Right. Cool. So you want to just take a couple of these questions? Yeah, sure. Um, Kylie, do you have a like page? So I have a like page, but like I get, I'm one of those people that like gets really into it and posts a lot. And then I like go off for a while. I signed up for Jesse Reagan's training, which I'll do eventually. Um, so I highly recommend like pages. I know everyone has a lot of success with them. I just haven't done it yet, but I have a like page. It has like a thousand likes. Um, you said before you don't have a free group. So I now have this like ongoing free group. Um, that's basically for anyone who like graduates one of my challenge groups and then, um, they graduate in challenge group. And then like, if I don't have a current, like right now I'm adding people basically the end of today, anyone who wants a 30 day free trial to my challenge group. I don't like adding people late. So like starting tomorrow until it's like time for my next challenge group, if someone just wants a free trial, I'll give it to them and then put them in this ongoing free, this ongoing like free challenge group. Um, but otherwise I don't run free groups. Um, personally, I've never had success with them. Um, I don't know why. I just have no one that ever wants to join a free group. They just want to join my challenge groups, which I know sounds like a good problem to have, but I like just, I just haven't figured it out yet. So. Um, my biggest problem is I will form then invite follow up and no response. When they come back on the contact list, I will see that they never responded. But I remember someone never followed and invite to the biggest trauma. Um, yeah, I mean I will follow up until the person blocks me. Um or like they die. I mean, like, um, I'm not gonna like follow up every two days, if that makes sense. I'm trying to think. Um no, that makes sense. Like you just basically are like following up with a person like, well, statistically in GoPro, it says you have to follow up at least seven to eight times sometimes. So, yeah. So like if I like am forming and I invite, so I'll like invite today, Monday. And then if I follow up on Wednesday and still no response and I'll put them in my calendar for like a month out um, to invite, like I have a calendar for me personally, I have a calendar just for dates to follow up with people. Um, so I'll put them for like a month from now. Same thing, I'll follow up invite in a month and then two days later, follow up from that follow up, no response in a month later. Um, so I'm like not doing it like every two days forever, but I'm like, will continue to move them in my calendar. Um, and there's people that purchase that like back to back to back to back like no message back to me if they really didn't want to see my stuff they'd block me in my opinion um are you cold inviting me sending these to people you're in conversations with so like i don't know everyone's definition of cold inviting i'm never i don't ever send an invite to someone that i've never talked to or like never sent a message to but i send a lot personally of messages like inviting them to my groups of people that i've sent messages to like saying all right let me start over I had people from people you may know. And so I say like, hey, Caroline, thanks so much for accepting my friend request. I love connecting with people that also went to Gettysburg, like something like, how do we connect? I also went to Gettysburg. Um, are you going back for a reunion weekend? Does it make up what? Let's say she doesn't respond. Like 12-ish days later, this is me personally, 12-ish days later, I'll invite. So I had sent that in the original message. She didn't respond, but I'm still going to invite. I'm never going to just invite someone I never sent a message to but this works for me personally because of what I talked about I'm a very very raw and real and share more than surface level posts so people have told me that they felt like they already knew me and that's why they joined me if you're only doing surface level posts I don't personally feel it's a good method because people are just going to think you're really salesy but if you're really sharing you beyond beach body and beyond the surface level then for me it works um, how many people do you friend each week? And then you immediately follow up with them to say what you friend with them. 
I friend um, anywhere from 25 to 35 people a day. But for me, it's really easy because I just go to like Getty's. I went to Getty's for college in Pennsylvania. Um, so I just like friend Getty's for people or people from the DMV. Um, so it's like easy. There's so many people um, for both areas. And then the next in about like probably 40% accept. And then the next day I go to recently add it and I message them. Um, any of these things, if I let it go more than a day or two, it just becomes overwhelming. And I'm a big fan of simple. Um, it's really simple if you do it every day. If you let it go for more than one or two days, it gets overwhelming and then you just don't want to do it, at least for me. Um, where did I miss it? As you're starting your own team page, when you first started, did you add your coaches just your page? It keeps me on home team page too. Um, I kept in my upline team page. Um, then I took them out because like too many groups and now they're back in my upline team page and now they're in like my leader anyone basically in boom fam and above are in like 18 different team pages they can do what they want new coaches I really stress like let's just stick to this page because you'll get overwhelmed really fast and I know so many people spend way too much time in groups um, like me personally I don't check notifications for, for even my own coach group my personal opinion is if someone really needs me, they will find a way to contact me. Um, so that's just me personally, but you can waste so much time in groups and I don't have time to waste. Like I'm trying to build an empire. Um, Boom. <laughs> right. How were, how many of your gold chip challengers do you write out invite to coaching opportunity? Uh, I like used to write out invite to coaching opportunity. I don't anymore. Um, and I don't really run sneak peeks because it's just so natural to go from challenger to coach. And I feel like the best people, let me see here. So um, Jordan was a challenger, then a coach. Lauren challenger, I'm going in the right diamonds. Lauren challenger to coach. Um, Mark challenger to coach. And yeah, so I, I mean, all my, and, 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 yeah, I mean, I can't think of anyone on my team that's like a really rock star that didn't start as a challenger. Yeah, I can't think of anybody. So they're all, yeah, they're all challengers. Um, and I occasionally have people that, like, this is a perfect example. Most of you guys don't even know this guy. Eddie, one of my coaches from like 2015, started like with the opportunity and he had done P90X before but hadn't gone through a challenge group and he got to diamond in like six weeks. Um, but my coaches don't even like believe that this guy exists because they don't even like know him because they came after him. Like he got like super fast to diamond, but he didn't like last long because he didn't like believe in the challenge groups. Like that's like our core mission. So challengers, what are your hours while working full time? Um, I attempt to wake up at 4 a.m. Um, sometimes my body wakes up naturally at 4 a.m. No alarm, and sometimes I like sleep through the alarm and I wake up at six um but normally I wake up at like four and um I am like not a great example because I don't get a ton done in the morning but I like really focus on like what makes me happy so like what makes me happy is like listening to a lot of personal development checking in my co my challenge group then I do my workout then I do like a 30 minute dance party then I do my invite then I shower and go to work. So like, obviously there's a lot of time in there where I could be getting a lot more done and I used to get more done, but like the dance party makes me really happy. Um, a lot of personal development makes me really happy. So I focus on these, these things that make me really happy. So I just make sure I get my invites, my challenge group stuff done in the morning. And then my lunch break, um, I do follow ups I do a lot during the cracks of the day. And then I hit everything else really hard right after work. Um, but less things like the invites and stuff. Um, happy birthday, like that's a super freaking easy thing to do. Um, but I really make sure I get my invites done. I have a few other things in the morning, but I wake up early, but I will never sacrifice sleep um, ever. Like some days I go to bed and I've gotten literally nothing done on my to-do list, but I value sleep more than anything else. Um, so that's just me personally. I used to sacrifice sleep and I was like working full time and doing beach body and sleeping like four hours a night. And Pat was like, you're crazy. And I was like, oh no, this is amazing. And then I like started getting more sleep and I was like, I'm freaking crazy. Goodbye to the four hour night thing. So. 
How many um, invites would you say you do in the morning, like a specific invite to one of your challenge groups? I like to do 15 quality invites. So I like really take time to look at their profile, um, see if it's really someone. I always say to myself, would I want to go on vacation with this person? Like I used to invite everybody and anyone and do like mass inviting. And I'm, if you do that, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Um, you'll definitely get higher success club members than me and you'll definitely um, like get volume faster. But I learned for me personally, I think um, that I really want to focus on quality people. So I do like 15 quality. Awesome. I have one last question, then we'll, we'll let you go so you can get your <laughs> Um, So how important would you say getting to live events is? And are your, oh my coaches, God. <laughs> are your coaches going to summit? Like the first, your first summit, like how many coaches did you have? And now how many people are going? Yeah, I mean, so the Team Boom like retreat was like where it changed for me. I mean, I, ha I went to that retreat with my cancellation form signed. Um, back in the day, you had to fax them in and I like didn't have access to a fax machine and then one, one work didn't work. So if I used to do it online, I wouldn't be a coach. So um, that completely changed it for me. My first summit, I think I had, I had one coach in my downline there who's actually not a coach anymore. And then this past year, I had like 22 coaches in my downline. And then next year, or like this year, I guess, it's already this year. This year, I think in my downline, we have like 35 signed up so far. Um, so it's crazy, like the ripple effect. Um, but live events are huge. And it's just insane, the impact they can have. And even like small, like Super Saturday, and even like meeting up with coaches. Um, if you can drive somewhere and see coaches, it's just, a game changer and like I wish I could tell you that all the personal development in the world will completely change your business but it's totally live events like live events are just the game changer well and then let's say if you did all the stuff that you just talked to us about today if you just did that like that saying was Pat say like you eat what you eat seven apples on a Sunday like let's say you just did this on a Sunday like how far would your business be compared to you doing it every day consistently Oh my God, it would be like nowhere. <laughs> I'm sure I'd get like two success code points. Um, yeah, I mean, you just got to do it just a little bit every day. And also like if you like waited to one day, you'd be doing like 10 hours of work in one day and you'd get, over, at least I would get overwhelmed and be like, through this. Um, yeah, you really, it's so simple. It's not easy. It's simple, but hard. Um, but if you really focus on doing just a little thing, every day your business will be so much farther than trying to like add it up or whatever i mean not to say like right before a challenge group like yesterday i definitely did more follow-ups than i normally do because i had a challenge group starting prep week today but i like was doing everything during the week too um so yeah no i hear people that do that like do everything in one day and i'm like that no wonder your business isn't that far right simple and consistent. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for getting on. I am going to record this and I'll post it in the boom fam. So you guys can um, listen to it again. Cause you had some awesome points. So super excited. You're going to Punta Cana, right? Oh yeah. Obviously you're the one that told me to get my guests <laughs> when I don't know what's going on. Sometimes I message Carolyn because she knows. <laughs> so thank you so much. Um, we'll end with, do you want us to give you a boom? Oh, sure. All right. I'm going to mute, unmute everyone. Hold on. Now that you're. All right. All right. One. One. On three, we'll y'all boom. One, two, three. Boom. 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 <laughs> it always sounds like it's saying boo. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you so much for getting on. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Good night, guys. Thank Have you. a good night. Good night. Bye.